Hey guys, welcome to Doctor Spine. So last time we discussed about lung volume and capacity, and today we'll be discussing about how to measure them. So as you can see here, I have drawn a short figure of the spirometer. So the spirometer consists of a outer chamber which is filled with water, thus called as water chamber, and on the top of it, a floating drum is placed inverted, and the floating drum is uh, connected to a string with a pulley, and is counterbalanced with a weight. and on the side of the weight you can see a pen is attached here and which can uh, the pen measures different uh, graphs on calibrated paper and uh, the inner chamber which is the green one it uh, is connected uh, in in the inner chamber there is a small metal tube which is connected from the top to the bottom and it connected from here with a rubber piece from where a there is a mouthpiece from where a person inspire or expire so whenever a person inspires quietly or deep inspiration generally we first of all we discuss quietly so when a person inspires quietly a certain amount of air from the drum goes into the lungs because of that some amount of volume goes into the lungs the drop the the drum will go down downwards because of that on the pulley we can see that there is a mark going like this now whenever person expires a certain amount of volume is added with that like, i'll show you with different color so when a certain amount of volume added to here because of that the drum goes upward and the pulley goes downward because of that another line is drawn as here you can see so a wave is formed and which quite inspiration and quite expiration the wave is of in normal ranges and when a person deep inspires or deep expires the wave of wave can be ranged in different like it can be a high wave or short wave like uh, it can be this or this like so with the help of spirometry we know that uh, we can measure lung volume and capacities but it has some disadvantages as a uh, spirometer with the help of spirometry we cannot measure the residual volume as residual volume is constantly present throughout the respiratory cycle during inspiration expiration even after forced expiration uh, residual volume is present so we cannot measure that for that we are using three different we can use three different method it's helium dilution technique nitrogen washout and plasmography and capacities which involve residual volume are as shown like functional residual capacity and total lung capacity so what happens in the helium dilution technique in the in this technique uh, we say that there is a respiratometer a respirometer in, a, in respirometer we use 5000 ml of air or say 5 liter which is in which there is concentration about 15% of helium You, we must think that why we use helium as helium is non reactive to any of the tissues it's non harmful so we can use helium it's not reactive so we use con 15% concentration of helium in 5000 ml of air and the person is asked to inspire and uh, when the helium enters from respiratory meter respiratory meter enters to the lung and start mixing with the air of the lung so the person is asked to have a quiet inspiration so we can see the air constantly grows in and during expiration the air comes out from the lungs so if uh, for a some amount of time the person is asked to continue his breathing and after some times a equilibrium point is at, uh, achieved we know that that after that uh, there won't be any exchange of there will be exchange of gases but uh, there won't be mm, difference in concentration so uh, here we see that there was some amount of like we discussed that there was 15% of helium in 500000 ml of air when we measure after some time the concentration of helium in the respirometer the final concentration comes up to be 10%. So we must think that uh, from 15 to 10% after 
after respiratory cycles like after inspiration expiration there is about 5% of air 5% of helium which was dissolved is not coming out mean it it is uh, captured in the lungs so that 5% is residual volume means the residual volume we know that it is not coming out it's always constant in the lung so from 15% to 10% from initial to final there is difference of 5% so that 5% is the amount of air that is captured so how we can measure that air so we take the initial concentration of helium as respiratorometer is 15% and the final after uh, equilibrium of the respiratorometer we can see that the concentration is about 10% respirometer sorry for that and the total volume we take as 500 ml so when we calculate it the volume of the total air volume of lung was 5000 and c1 the concentration before the starting of inspiration the helium concentration was 15% and after concentration and after uh, equilibrium the concentration was about 10% so 5 where did the 5% go as uh, as it should be somewhere so that is captured in residual volume but we must know that how what is the amount of residual volume so we know that 5000 total air in the respirometer 15% initial concentration 10% final and the c2 which is also the final concentration is 10 so as uh, all of this number are in percentage uh, are in percent so we will be converting them into percentage 15 by 100 so when we evolve all of these things all of them are in ml don't forget that so when we solve all of this we get 5 sorry so 25000 by 10 so that's our functional residual capacity 2500 ml now we got the functional residual capacity now we know that with the help of spirometry we can get the volume of uh, air inspired and we can volume get the volume expired so functional residual capacity consists of erv plus rv so after removing the expiratory reserve volume what the amount of air after removing expiratory reserve volume the amount of air that is present in the lung is rv so we can conclude that the 5% was which was from initial to the final concentration that was the amount or the percent of air captured by the residual volume thank you